Right, guys, here we are, MMA UK News. Stoomboy, as always, <laughs> MMA UK BJJ show. So, um, we're talking then about MMA. So, we're talking specifically about the English Mixed Martial Arts Association. So, the emails are going to be this weekend. So, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's the 1st, 2nd, and 3rd of July. Now, it's going to be down at the Fit Expo in Liverpool. Now, anybody that doesn't have tickets, obviously, make sure you head over to the, the English MMA Facebook page or head over to the EnglishMMA.org website and you'll be able to get your tickets directly from there. So it's going to be, a, a again, I, I've been saying this every, time, every interview I've done because obviously Dan Hardy and Mark Goddard are making a big deal saying this, this is a historic event because it's the first time we're going to have a Four Nations amateur event on this level. So um, we're going to have Team England, Team Ireland, Team Wales, and obviously Team Scotland. Team Scotland coming down with an absolute army of the best amateur talent that we've got from all over Scotland. As you see, Jack proudly representing the flag in the back there and the go. colours on the top on as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so Jack's coming down. So Jack was uh, recently added. I think it was only about a week ago that he was added to it. So... Um, but he's a great addition. I mean, anybody that's ever seen Jack or even hearing about him, obviously, that he's training in the gym and stuff like that, people hold him in high regard. So it's going to be a great addition to this weekend's card. Um, and one person I'm definitely looking forward to seeing. So, so Jack, what's an absolute pleasure, buddy. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. Thank you for having me on. Oh, definitely. I'd say as soon as I speak to Johnny and he mentioned it, and I'm like, I mean, I didn't even see your name coming up. But again, that's because... I, mean, I don't know if my name's on the thing. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, yeah. you're turning you up when you're like that. Yeah, you're, you're going to be turning up like, who am I fighting about? <laughs> mate, we don't know. <laughs> so. I'm not first, mate. I'm, I'm there to fight. Do you know what I mean? I don't do, I don't do admin. That's not yeah. what I'm here for. <laughs> so, uh, but as I mean, it's, how's this, everything with you? I mean, obviously the Grip House. I mean, we spoke off air. I mean, the Grip House is one of these gyms that... Um, like, even like, when I've trained at other gyms um, and people used to say, why are you saying so much about the grip house and talk highly of them? And that? Because the, when I was coming up through jiu-jitsu, the guys I wanted to beat were from the grip house. They were the best guys in my eyes. And then, that was the same for MMA. It was the same for kickboxing or whatever they did at uh, the grip house. It was always, they were the guys you wanted to beat because you knew they were the best. So, so how's everything for you then, obviously training at the grip house at the moment? Again, fantastic. Um, I've been out for a wee while, so I've still been training, uh, been very active, yeah. uh, kind of around the gym. And I mean, people have seen me at events and things like that. And I'm always, I'm always doing my part. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They definitely do their part for me. And sometimes you just need to take one for the team. Yeah. yeah. But now it's my shot. So. Yeah, it's an awesome team, man. It's a really, really good team. As I said, again. There's so much experience in the grip house that you can bounce off of. Um, do you mean all the older guys that have obviously been through it? They've done it. Um, even people like Reese McEwen and stuff like that, who's out there at the moment. Yeah, yeah. These warriors and stuff like that. So the experience that you you young guys have got to bounce off of is unbelievable. I think it's such a unique kind of position to be in uh, as far as Scottish MMA goes because you've still got that legacy of the people who did it before you if that makes sense so you've got that aspect of big shoes to fill do you know what i mean yeah but um you can also flip that in its head and being like the people you've got to learn from are head and shoulders above everybody else in the country's got because the the experience is that good yeah. and so again i'm very proud to kind of represent and play my part and then you've yeah. got guys like reese who are doing it at that level like right now, same time as us. Do you know what I mean? So it's a great position to be in, and it's just a good team. Like it's a good atmosphere. Yeah. Let me ask you. Obviously, being a young guy, because obviously, uh, and again, I, I spoke to Ellis about this, and we were talking to me about as a young guy, because obviously, young guys are out there and they're, they're out there bevying, out there chasing women about, and do you know what I mean? They're doing all sorts of stuff, but they're yeah, not yeah. training. I mean, there's guys out there that 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 talk. They want to be an MMA. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. But then there's yeah, guys yeah. like you that are actually in the gym, putting in the time, putting in the effort. I mean, how do you keep yourself motivated? Good question. Do you know what I mean? Uh, 
you just are motivated. It's one of those things that's like, part of it isn't even motivation. It's like, I'd be lying if I said I wanted to get up every day and go to the gym. Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to thank myself for it. So you do it anyway. Yeah. If that makes sense. There's there's discipline there. It's not it's not all motivation. And again, the, the motivation thing is really just being interested in it. Motivation yeah. will come and go. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was Muhammad Ali was it said that every, he hated every single day of training. He hated training, but he loved fighting. So Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say I hate training. I'm a, I'm a I'm a big fan of my training. I do enjoy yeah. it. Um yeah. but again, you everybody's got those days where they can't be bothered, do they feel like they've got no energy, but yeah. Turn, turns out you do. You just you're just in a bad mood. Yeah. What do you do outside the gym? Obviously, what wise are you working at uni? Uh so I'm a PT. Right. Um, I've been PTing for two years now, maybe. Oh. Oh. I'm working out at the pure gym at Charing Cross. Nice. So I've been there seven months, eight months, something like that. Yeah. Uh, I'm packing up nicely. Nice, nice. So, so I do, do that and then. So you do uh, like strength the, and conditioning coach classes or what 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 is it you do, PT and wise? Uh so PT and wise, everything I do is I tend to keep more of a performance base on it. Um but it is mostly kinda weightlifting, cardio, all your kind of regular PT stuff. But I do add in obviously the MMA skill set that I've got as well. It's a nice little yeah. niche to have. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. I mean we talked who was it years ago they had uh Billy Blanks, I don't know if you remember Billy Blanks. He did, he did the, was it Tai Bo, I think it was called, and it was a, a video. It was a fitness video, but it was okay. all combat based related. So it was like yeah. throwing punches and throwing kicks and stuff like that. But it was an all round body workout. Um, yeah, and that's where a lot of people obviously forget that 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 martial arts, especially obviously MMA, um, offers that a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Exercise a little bit more it's training bit- wise. I feel like it's a bit more engaging. That's how I explain yeah. it to people. Like at every kind of client that I pick up within the first three months, if they don't already have one, I try and get them doing a sport rather than just, oh, I want a six pack or yeah. I want to, I want to be able to lift X amount of weight. Because, like, fair enough that that's what most people want, but I think I think that's what most people think they want. Yeah. Yeah. If that makes sense. I think it's much better for someone to pick up a sport and then you're much more likely to suck at that. Yeah. Even yeah. if you even if you do your sport, it then makes all your gym work and stuff more entertaining because you're doing it in relation to your sport that you're interested in. Yeah. And then if you chuck that sport, you go and try a new one. And then it's like, how many times have you seen people start the gym for like three weeks and then never go back? Yeah, yeah. They still pay memberships for six, seven, they eight still, months after that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and the thing I always tell people is, especially when it's getting involved in MMA or boxing or something like that. Yeah. For me, I hate. I can't go and sit on a treadmill to do cardio, or like run a treadmill or things like that because it's mind numbingly boring. Yeah. It is just so it's so destroying, right? That's not me, mm. but. I'll burn the same amount of calories if I was to go and spar. If not more calories, if I'm to spar or to do pads and see when I'm doing that, I'm not. When you're on a treadmill, you're just focused about how tired you are and how knackered you are because you yeah. don't need to think about running. Whereas, like, when I'm sparring, I'm not like, oh shit, I'm really tired. I'm, I'm doing my best not to get punched in the face, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nah, definitely. When you're on a treadmill, all you're doing is you're looking down thinking shit i've still got 20 minutes to go <laughs> yeah all you're doing is looking at all you're doing I, uh, is looking at a timer do you know what yeah, i mean yeah. like you, do you look it. at the timer and you think to yourself sh- before you even look at the timer you think i must have ran about 20 minutes there and then you look down at the timer and it's like one minute 30 seconds and you're like oh, yeah fuck no me. exactly it's just it's it's mentally draining do you know yeah. what i mean it's not even it's not the physical it's the mentally draining yeah the difference is I go and spar or do MMA or wrestling or what, whatever I do for my cardio. Yeah. Um, it just distracts me from how fucked I am, if that makes yeah. sense. I just get on with it. Yeah. Nah, definitely. I said, I always talked about, like, like when I used to do, when I'd be in doing jiu-jitsu and we'd be rolling and stuff like that, and even when we went to comps and so on, and... Obviously, I'm not that. I'm not athletic, right? I've got a belly. I'm a. I'm. A, I've, got, I've got a dad body. A power right? belly. A power belly, right? So, yeah. and then, but what I used to do is when I used to go into comps, 
I never ever got tired, right? Uh huh. Now you would look at me and you would think, oh, if he was rolling, then he would be tired within a minute, right? But yeah. I never got tired. My gas tank was always brilliant. And the reason it was always brilliant is because the amount of rolling I used to do in the gym. And I would be on the mat and I'd be rolling and uh I'd got to a point where my cardio was good, right? I yeah. couldn't don't get me wrong, I couldn't I couldn't go out and run a mile, right? But, yeah. but I can roll for an hour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, I can I can spar five rounds, ten rounds, twelve rounds. I like fighting wise, yeah. I can go a very long time. I can't run thirty seconds without getting a stitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's not even an exaggeration. Like we do uh at the grip house, we'll do all the sparring and then we'll do positional stuff. And to finish, we do like a two minute jog around the mat. And I am, I maybe I don't show it, but I'm struggling. Like, I've not, I was just, I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know if you know, do you know Keith? Keith. For the grip house. Do Does I probably time? do. Keith McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it was one time, it was, at, it was the week after my second fight, and he came into uh, MMA sparring and he hit me with the worst body shot I've ever been hit. It was a knee. Um, and he got me against the wall and he hit me with this knee. And I, I swear to God, I felt his knee hit the wall. Yeah, Behind yeah. me, it was terrible. You're making pure involuntary noises and all that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and honestly, see, since then, I can't run 30 seconds without getting a stitch. Yeah, yeah. That's thing, we some... don't need to run. We don't need to run anyway. But I, I, you're an MMA I'm... fighter. You're not going to be yeah. running anywhere. So... Uh, well, that's the thing. People talk, uh, you know, people talk about like fight or flight. Yeah, yeah. I'm slow as fuck, so I just had to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, and that's what I love about it. I love about it because, and again, people look at people as well. They judge people. Do you know what I mean? Because, and we, yeah, I don't know if you saw the Joe Rogan video where it was like he was talking about people look at people and think, "Oh, I can take him," or "I can take him." Do yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. But then. How many times have you walked in like an MMA room and looked at the killers that are lined up against the wall? Yeah. And people would always look and go, I'll pick on the smallest person. Yeah. Right. And the smallest person, like most of the time, it was like the smallest person was like Paul McVeigh, for example. Yeah, yeah. Right. And height wise. So people would look and be like, oh, I would take Paul McVeigh. But then he's the worst person out of the whole... Oh, yeah, the he's people. absolutely the worst person to pick. Yeah, but yeah. that's the, the judging thing. People look and say, well, I can do this and I can do that. Um, and it's not until they get in there they realise shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that's what I love about it as well. I love about it. It's very, very... Martial arts are very deceiving for people. People that don't yeah. know anything about it watching... Because how many sofa guys have you seen like, oh, I can do this or I can do that? Or, yeah. They shout at people like... They shout like... I, can't, I remember sitting there and somebody was talking about, I think it was Brock Lesnar and Shane Carwin mm-hmm. when they had a fight and Shane Carwin absolutely smashed him in the first round and he had all these armchair guys on Facebook saying, oh, I would have done this, I would have done that. I'd have finished him and you're like, really, I Really? <laughs> you, you know what I get all the time? I get this all the time. Um, I get this. Every time I go on like a night out or something, I end up talking to people that or you, you know that way you meet people that you know, but you're not like really pals with? Yeah, yeah. I get that all the time. And they always end up talking to me about fighting, and it's annoying because it'll happen like five or six times in the one night. Yeah. And you have the same conversation with everyone, and they all yeah. just go, I like seeing your next fight. Like, see what I would do is I would just knock them out. <laughs> and I'm like, do you want to be my coach? I never thought about it like that. Do you know what I mean? I was always just trying to win decisions, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we saw it with Darren Till how... as well. What's that? We saw it with Darren Till as well. I don't know if you saw a video of Darren Till, and that's what he said. He used to have people like I think he got did he lose against Masvidal, and then yeah. people that didn't have anything to do with MMA, they didn't fight or that, and they were giving him advice, and he was like, yeah, yeah. Know, just like, oh, they're like that. Off, oh, I would just, see, I would just see red. I'm like, would you? Yeah. <laughs> would you? Yeah. <laughs> Well, see, we love it though. We love these people. Do you know what I mean? Because I'd say hey, honestly, it wouldn't be the same without them. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. Um, so, what about obviously this weekend? Then, so obviously, uh, it's coming up. Obviously, it's going to be a massive platform. Um, yeah. Uh, again, obviously, uh, again, I've been saying this: the talent that's heading down there is unbelievable. I mean, the talent yeah. in Scotland at the moment uh, is at an all-time high. So, how did you then? Because obviously, you got told a week ago. So, how did you find out then that you were going to be? there this weekend uh, as I said I'd, 
I've been out, uh, been out of fighting for quite a while. Yeah. Still training on that, but just hard times from, you know what it's like, injuries and things can slow you down. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew that I was getting the all clear, but I was close to it. Yeah. Three, four weeks ago. So I just started dieting anyway. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. like, it's a massive opportunity. And if I didn't start dieting and then one came up and I was like, oh, I'm 82 kilo. Yeah. Yeah. Like, fuck fighting a middleweight. Do you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and a welterweight it is, you know, I've never fought 77 before. I've done yeah. 70 and I've done 65 never again. Um, yeah. But I saw so I'm feeling healthy, feeling good. I'm, I'm not I'm not fussed about the short notice, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, we stay ready all year round. Uh, again, blessed to have the opportunity, so I was never yeah. going to turn my nose up at that. Yeah. I'd say the massive platform, as we've seen a lot of people springboard from from this onto massive things um which we're going to see obviously after this event there's going to be a lot of you uh young guys going on to, to massive things do you know what I mean? yeah so, um well, i mean i certainly hope so do you know what i mean yeah i heard there's a 500 pound bonus going i found that out yesterday yeah yeah so, so i best fighter i think the best fighter uh, um so putting up a 500 quid bonus for um how, how are they judging this like I don't exactly know how they're going to judge it. Because obviously I know at previous other events, other different martial arts events, you know, Battle Arena do obviously the, the, the fight of the night and stuff like that. So Yeah, yeah. Um, so how how these guys are going to work it, I don't know. I don't know if they'll do it on a point system or, do you know what I mean, like based on like maybe submissions or knockouts, yeah. whatever. Um, so I don't exactly know, but I think you guys will find out about it on... Friday, so you should oh, find okay. out about it. Obviously, but like maybe before weigh-ins, or I don't know if they do maybe a rules meeting or something like that uh, on the Friday or Thursday or whenever they do these rules meetings. So, I, so yeah, I honestly, I've always hated that about shows. See yeah. when you go to shows and they do rules meetings. <laughs> see if you need like honestly. See if you've signed up for a fight and yeah. you put your name on and you're gonna go into a fight and you don't know the rules. Just like yeah. just let them fight. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, I just that's all I want to see. I want to see people who have not actually trained long enough to know the rules be like, Yeah, 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 just jump in. Yeah, yeah, like, why, why are we wasting our time doing a rules meeting? Yeah, yeah, that is, mate, mate, listen, you've seen how many amateur fights you've seen though, where obviously somebody's maybe not knew the rules and they've done some crazy shit, man, right? Yeah. And then they've got disqualified and they're looking like that. Why did I get disqualified? You're like, well, listen, yeah. you threw you threw a fucking back spinning elbow or whatever, whatever you've yeah. done. Do you know what I mean? That's not allowed. And you're like, all right, I never knew that. Do you know what I mean? So, um, so it happens all the time. It happens all the time. But obviously, a level like that, this level, um, I see you're probably you're probably not going to need a rules meeting because everybody will know the rules before they get there because of the the the, the size of the platform that they're on. Yeah, exactly. And also, like, if I convince them to not do a rules meeting, yeah. It means that I've got an excuse when I elbow someone. <laughs> <laughs> it means I've got something to get away with. You know what I mean? Like, if I if I elbow someone, they're like, "That's not allowed." I was like, "You didn't say that in the rules meeting." Do you know what I, I mean? I, I've got cover. Yeah, listen, that'll make a highlight reel anyway. That'll definitely make a highlight reel. So <laughs> I hope so. And then, what do you see yourself doing? So obviously, this will be this is your main focus. So obviously, this weekend. But what what, what do you fancy doing the rest of the year? As many as possible, to be honest. Um, you know, I get so busy with training and coaching and things like that that I, I don't get I don't get as much free time as I'd like. Yeah. But I've got my dad's getting married at the end of the month, and yeah. the week the week after this, I'm going on holiday with the boys. So yeah, yeah. Gonna get a bit of time to wind down. Um, I just think a month off is too long. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, but. Yeah, I should be more grateful. Do you know what I mean? I'm getting a month off. Doesn't happen to, doesn't happen to everyone. But so you got to uh, wind down, though. I mean, you've got to wind down. As I said, uh, you young guys train f- fucking every day. Do you know what I mean? I mean, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know anybody that I've spoke to. Uh, certainly in MMA, um, like any young guy I speak to, and they say that we train seven days a week. And I'm like, how do you? Do you know I mean, when do you wind down? And when do you? When do you get the chance to wind down? And like, usually the day before the fight. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, like we'll we'll yeah, not do yeah. much. We'll do like light sparring. Or we'll do something. Do you know what I mean? But seven days a week, every day. So for you taking a month off, I mean, you deserve a month off. You deserve some time off. So I suppose I deserve it. I just it feels weird taking that long off when you're not used to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm sure I'll enjoy it, and then I'll hopefully get out another couple times this year. My my goal for the year was to fight mm-hmm. uh, four times at least. Yeah. So. Um, I'll get two out of this, and then if I can get two later in the year, then it's a pretty good save. No, definitely, definitely. The final thing for you then, Jack. So obviously, you've been in the game a lot of while. Um, anybody you want to shout out to? So the usual friends, family members, teammates, things like that. I'm going to forget everyone. Uh, everyone. I want to shout out everyone because yep. I'll end up forgetting someone and then I'll get messages and whatnot, and I'm like, just <laughs> let me let, let me live, man. Yeah. Uh, the, just the usual is like, thank Dean, uh, he's my coach, guy, owns the grip house. Yeah. Like, uh, all, all the guys, all my training partners, uh, all the guys that are going down with us, so Johnny, Ellis, Stephen, uh, Jazz, Jeff, uh, Stevie's coming down, uh, everybody that's coming down and getting involved, like, yeah, and all, all the training partners. Do you know what I mean? They all, we all play a part. Yeah, yeah, awesome team. As we need to give a special shout out Dean Riley because obviously Dean Riley, self-proclaimed best dressed man in Scotland, Scottish martial arts. I think he said so. Uh, uh, yeah, so. Be- best dressed man in Scottish martial arts <laughs> so far. Yes, <laughs> so far. If there's a title I'm coming for, that's the one I want. Um. <laughs> But it's all right. He taught me everything I know anyway. So yeah, well, it's the good that I love Dean. I mean, and it must be brilliant having somebody like Dean because Dean, obviously, he's, he's all about business. He's all about obviously training and obviously teaching and coaching and whatnot. But then Dean's also got that funny side as well, where he's an absolute hilarious guy. Do you know what I mean? And so it must yeah. be an absolute joy to have around you, especially when maybe t- training's hard. But then you got somebody like Dean, obviously joking about messing about and stuff like that, just keeping everybody the morale up and keeping everybody laughing and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it holds like a really fine line of he's like Dean is like allergic to bullshit. That's the best <laughs> way I can describe it. He's like sometimes I'll sometimes I especially used to do it a lot when I was younger. Is yeah. like I'd ask Dean questions that I think I was really just looking for confirmation, and yeah. he would be like. You already know, like you already know the answer. Why are you asking this question? <laughs> um, and I, I think there's a lot of that, but it really toes the line between again. Everybody always has a good time, but see, see when like things are hard. Yeah. And again, often they get that way. He doesn't tolerate like. Again, just doesn't tolerate the bullshit. He's like, yeah. I do, he doesn't like to see people complaining. Do you know what I mean? Which I think is great as well. Yeah. Um, so as it's it's very professional, but also feels I feel like he gets you used to the pressure if that makes sense yeah yeah nah definitely he's been there he's done it himself so um, yeah definitely as a great guy as did uh, Dean's always one I would say anytime I've ever spoke with Dean or uh, seen Dean and we always get a laugh we always get a joke and so on so um, I do the awards and I remember came up came up with an award for um, Louise Murray, who jiu jitsu at the time, so she yeah, was like yeah. female of the year. And I came up and she wasn't there, so she said, Look, let Dean take it on my behalf. So we did a video and it was like, Right, okay, this is for Louise Murray. And Dean's grabbed yeah. it and he's like, This is not for Louise Murray, this is for me, <laughs> Louise Murray. This is mine, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that was where he came out with it. I'm the best dressed man in Scotland, this is what it's yeah. for Scottish martial arts, so um, yeah. But as an awesome guy, awesome guy, and as I always, always love seeing him, and always love seeing obviously you guys out there putting yeah. on a show as well. So we're definitely buzzing for this weekend for you, Jack. So, so there we go, guys. We're going to have Jack Lecky, the Grip House, uh, representing Team Scotland. That's going to be this weekend, the first, yeah. second, and third of July. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's going to be at the Fit Expo, uh, the English Mixed Martial Arts Association. So the EMAs um, down in Liverpool. Now, tickets, as I said earlier, head over to, uh, obviously, the English MMAA Facebook page. Get your tickets from there. Anybody that can't make the event, now the pay-per-view price 
is absolutely awesome. It's twelve ninety nine for all three days. All right. So anybody that's ever seen an MMA event on pay per view knows that twelve ninety nine for three days of martial arts is absolutely unbelievable, and especially this level. So we're going to see some of the best martial artists, MMA fighters from all over the four nations. So Team Scotland are mainly coming me. in and win. Mainly, mainly me. Mainly you're Jack. Playing to, you're playing 12 99 for me. <laughs> so yeah. 12 99 for Jack. We're going to get obviously a guest appearance from Dean Riley in the background as well. So you're going to let him share the limelight, Jack. Yeah, I just need to make sure he's not outdressing me. <laughs> so, but no, listen, it's going to be a great event, guys. Make sure you get that pay per view if you're not going to be there. I'd say I'll have the pay per view, so I'll be able to watch it uh, over that three days. So, uh, it's going to be brilliant, mate. It's going to be brilliant. I'm glad you're on the show, Jack. I'm glad you're going to be on it. So, definitely a fantastic addition to the already unbelievable card. Uh, I'll be glad to be there again. It's, it's been too long. I just. You get the itch, do you know what I mean? I just want to, just want to swing knuckles. <laughs> that's, that's the only way I know how to say it. Do you know what I mean? I, I just want to throw down. Uh, when are you heading down? Are you heading down? Are you heading down Thursday or Friday? Heading down on the Friday. Right, right. So yeah, obviously I drive. It's only what a three-hour drive, three and a half-hour drive or something. So uh, are you driving down or are you getting the train? We'll find out. <laughs> as, I, as I said, I don't. I you, don't do do you do know it's Wednesday. You do know it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I don't do. I don't do the organising. Right. I'll leave that. Leave that to everyone else. Nice. You just tell me when I'm fighting. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I yeah, hope I you get there. I hope you I get don't, there. I don't organise. I punch faces. End of this. <laughs> well, listen. Enjoy. Enjoy this weekend. As it. Uh, enjoy it. Have an absolutely wonderful time. As you go down there, do your thing. Do you know what I mean? And obviously the rest is history, buddy, all right? Uh, and obviously give my love to all the guys at the Grip House. Tell Dean, I said hello. Big shout out to Dean as well. All right, buddy? Uh, well done. Thanks for that, man. Yeah, we'll speak to you soon, Jack. All right? I appreciate that. Take care, buddy. See you later, man.